beings uh, from the Mormon church called Annalise Scarron, who was excommunicated, who made her translation or ascension, bid farewell to a pastor, looked youthful, all of her teeth were restored, and she went to Venus. And now, uh, when, in 1986, when he met her on the on Mount Chasta, um, she appeared in a space shoot, and he could see the, uh, the uh, mantoid beings uh, who were nice, um, and they're interdimensional. They're on the, a planet called Bellacourt, and they invited the Venusians to have a base there, and she materialized for a moment Shasta. He could see Sirius, and there at the same time, they were in this dimensional portal. Well, when Lady Orta takes him uh, to uh, the Tibetan Plateau, the lady steps out and goes, hey, how are you doing? She's in a silver spaceship. We're going up to see run up to Venus today. And <laughs> thousands, about 5,000 uh, of these spheres appeared and people were landing. They got on these cigar-shaped ships and Valiant Thor's ship called Victor One. I want to talk about Victor One. It's named after a, a woman named Victoria. And they were fighting off some Saurian invasion in Grecian times and the ship crashed on Mount Olympus. That's where the, all the the myth of the gods, they were actually Venusians. And so uh, they were, gave them those like powers. And so that's how a myth of the ETs can translate into a human a misunderstanding based on, uh, you know, the interdimensional and technological differences. So the gods of Olympus were actually a crass Venusian ship that um, was involved in the battle protecting the earth. Um, She's, Lady Ord is holding something that's called a nimbus. Um, anyway, there's my modern day friend, Louis Martin. How's that for a shining smile? That guy always is radiant, full of love. He has had multiple contacts, and I want to share with you about the golden disk of the sun, the Sintamani stone. Um, the golden disk of the sun is a neural communication device that works for the angelic realms to communicate to the earth exactly what's going on. And they used to list be involved uh, on the surface of Lemuria, and the people knew of it, and then when Lemuria um, uh, was devolving and they had problems, it was moved to Atlantis, it was on the surface. At the final sinking of Atlantis, it was moved to Egypt, and then in our ancient myths, in any record you see, you see a sun with wings, that represents the golden disk of the sun, which was known. And in Atlantean times, uh, the, the good white priesthood, opposed to the, the dark, I'm not gonna, it's not racial or black or anything, but um, were aware that it was being misused by some of these beings who had infiltrated the earth. They come into the earth and they do mind control and they take over beings and it's like a fifth column. It's how they take over planets. They get control of the system and then they just steer it uh, into, the, into the wall so they have a slave planet and they've done that for grays, they've done that to some of these insectoid beings, and uh, then they send them out to do all the dirty work in other worlds, and the Confederation goes, we know you're doing it, they go, no we're not, they're doing it. So that game is over now, and um, this is gonna be cleaned up, at least for our area of the solar system. We've been under a lot of oppression and a lot of negativity, because the Earth was very powerful, a positive planet, and they felt that the souls who were negative could be restored and healed here and achieve a higher dimensional frequency. But we failed like three or four times. Finally, they go, okay, that's it. Uh, anyone who doesn't make it this time, they're gonna go to other worlds and the earth is gonna ascend. And there's a, that's ascendant frequency and vibration and attunement with God's laws and, and the order of love. So Louis has had many incredible experiences. He. Uh, has had contacts his whole life. When he was 14 years old, he was the head of the metaphysical group. And go, oh, we're going up on the hill, they're gonna show up tonight. And so people, you know, 20 metaphysicians in, from South America go there and the UFOs come over and, you know, he is the leader for, of programmed contacts. You've heard of E. Seti and James Gilliland? Well, Louis, James Gilliland on steroids. James, James is kind of like, Hey, it's a concert, everyone come and hang out. Now, and there's a lot of amazing experiences. Louis are much more intimate, 
and uh, they can come closer because he has smaller groups. And I've gone down there a couple of times and we've had some incredible sightings and experiences. So that's Louis at Sahama. Uh, we're doing that this summer. Uh, that's at the site. Behind there is the golden disk of the sun that was moved to Tiwanaku about 9,500 years ago. And 4,000 years ago, uh, they knew that things were coming for, to a change, so they decided to hide the sacred sites and they uh, redirected a river and put a hole in the mountain and filled up what's called Lake Titicaca the Minor. And now the Golden Disks exist there. Um, the ETs physically had a contact with him and he has so many contacts. He's talking to people from the Rigel system, from Alpha Centauri, uh, Tau Ceti, uh, Ascended Masters inside the Earth, you know, <laughs> sadless with this guy and he's so, so sweet. You won't hear him talking about reptilians or conspiracies, that it's just all love and contact. And so he takes groups to ancient sites where the Great White Brotherhood and the inner Earth of Garthans have contacted humanity to invoke the light. And he does tours in Europe along the Dragon Lines. They appeared in, in Stonehenge and then they found out uh, there was a crop circle of a dragon. They went there and uh, they had their meditation and two hours later the farmer destroyed it never seen by people, but he went there and St. Michel in France and there was a series of things that ended in Jerusalem. So he's been healing the earth on, uh, with gathering people together and they seem to like to have people grounding the energies, spiritual contact people who are open and to invoke the light and it helps anchor the energies uh, and they use us as tuning forks in these sacred locations. So behind me there is the golden disk of the sun. So Louis goes there and um, he gets, they go to the island of the sun, they take a shuttle down, they go down a sta stairway, they take a, a, a shuttle and he meets uh, um, a master called Soromaz, who's 4,500 years old and is the guardian of the golden disk of the sun and one of the primary 12 Atlantean keepers. They've divided the earth up into 12 sections of underground cities and uh, networks. And uh, the Master Saramas takes him up and it's a little hill and there's uh, cement stones like Stonehenge. And the golden disk of the sun is hovering above it and there's male and female masters in levi meditation levitating around it. And the Master says, reach out and touch it. And he said as soon as he thought that, uh, he projected and uh, he had past life memories and deep spiritual things. He said he had a lot of questions like me, you know, like, oh, what about this and what about that? And, what? <laughs> and the, he could tell by the master's kindness and the look in his eyes, just don't worry, those will be answered in time. So he'd been to the golden disk of the sun. Then they invite him, and I think this was earlier, I don't know the time frames, I forget, but in 19, probably this is one of the first ones, he went to the Temple of Purity. He was guided to Machu Picchu and he met three individuals from around the world who were telepathically guided. They never met each other. Just like Gabe and the military guy came to teach me, I'd never met him. And um, he um, um, went into um, um, the... Uh, they went on an Incan road for, th for three days. They had to have climbing equipment, an ancient Incan road that was just, you know, like little rocks that had made this road. And he went to this very, very remote village, high in the Andes, on to, you know, you, you walk in and out, and the people are very simple and humble. And he had three experiences. The first one, they found a giant tree that was on a giant rock and the roots went all the way around the rock. You could barely see the rock. And he went over and they found a golden, so there was a golden hieroglyphic thing. And it held the Akashic records again, so he put his hand on it and had a, they all had experiences with it. Um, then um, the next day, they were guided to go to a triangular shaped lake and they all stood on a corner of the Triangle Lake and it was pretty small. I mean, he almost said it was like a pond. And he said a mist came in and they couldn't see each other and he looked at the water, it started to shimmer like a sound current. 
and they found themselves projected beneath into a sacred inner temple where there were the 12 masters, all 12 of them were there, and they gave them all benedictions and information uh, in regards to um, the future stuff. They don't, talk, they don't talk about that stuff to us, but the vibrations change. Then the next day, um, he was, uh, they were on the surface and they went to another area of the valley and they were all told to pray and meditate and there was uh, an or three different orbs with a threefold flame. I think it's yellow, pink, and blue. And the orbs came into each of their hearts and raised their vibration. Later on, the other two weren't allowed, but Louis was projected into a spaceship. They sucked him up uh, physically, and he had an experience where one of the masters told him about his future and how his life would change, and blah, 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 blah. So that's another major experience. Another one, he's in the mountains in Machu Picchu, and the UFOs uh, had created what he called an eccentric portal. Now you heard of Corey put in the blue sphere. This is the same kind of thing, where they put a thing and they told him to walk into it, and next thing you know, he finds himself uh, on the artificial moon of Ganymede. And another one of his master teachers and he's got so many, I, Soramel from Venus, I think, or I forget. So he's there, he has an information. He's told that this moon is for all of the galactics that want to help the Earth. They have to spend time up there and learn about the sickness of the Earth and, or our particular nuances and how to relate to us in contact. So um, then, uh, his books are unfortunately in Spanish. I'm trying to get them translated into English. And when they do, it's very difficult because Bolivian language is difficult. Another experience, he's taken to Venus. And that's in his slideshow and stuff. You have to come to Shasta for that. It's just amazing. Um, his masters take him up there and he goes into Earth. He shows what, is the, what their life like is on the surface. And they have holographic stuff that uh, no one can see them. No, you can't get to Venus. Vibration is there. They are uh, very high. No dark flea, no negative, nothing will happen there. So Venus is extremely um, advanced uh, spiritually and technologically. And um, they'd like to share with us information. In fact, Tesla probably could have given us the technology, but he decided not to. He was actually from Venus. Uh, and because we are our governments and everyone would misabuse it. They're, look what they're doing with the space fleet. And they're already figured out how to jump in portals and they're trying to wreak havoc throughout the uh, galaxy and it ain't happening anymore. They, they're they getting their little booty spank uh, in that level. Uh, there's a story about, uh, that we heard from Corey about ASIO here at Pine Gap where they um, had uh, send a beam up and, and ask for a response from these giant spheres. And ASIO has a very high technology there. And they shot a, like, they get a response, so we're going to try and blow you up. So unfortunately, for all the mind control tech guys and that dark agenda there, they probably eat five or six babies a day. No, I'm kidding. It's <laughs> weird stuff. You kind of have to laugh at it on one level. But uh, they got exploded. That, that base was just blown up. Everyone who sent the beam out, that thing was, so don't mess with us anymore. The Galactics are here. We're going to clean it up. And there is a physical aspect. But for us, it's about a spiritual vibrational raising for our own consciousness to attune to the emanations that come from what they call the Kolo, or the Grand Central Sun, that come through it's actually through stargates and through our sun itself. And it'll be what they call a quote, solar flash event that we don't know exactly what's gonna happen, but uh, it could transform a lot of things. And there's so much speculation. Uh, I don't wanna get into details like I know what's going on, but we're hearing things. I like all this stuff, like everyone else said, this is just my own interpretation from my own experience and my own study. 
and my own contacts. So the golden disk of the sun is the divine feminine vortex of the planet. And that was initiated in 2012. So guys, take a back seat. The women are in charge now. Watch the divine feminine take off and uh, con control us. It's, we've had enough masculine hogwash. Not that a feminine can't give us some hogwash, too. <laughs> um, try to tell your wife, let's maybe go to dinner tonight. No, anyway. so. There's another thing called the Sintamani stone, and this is a, uh, a planet in the Sirius system that was very um, uh, important. They were trying to lower the vibration of the planet so that the higher angelic functions of the planet could be transposed into the third dimensional plane, and it failed. Uh, and but it's a high vibration planet on the physical plane, or, or, the, it exploded, some of the meteorites came to Earth, and they actually bought a large one. It's called a, it's like an egg. Eggs are important. Look at Saibaba and stuff like that. Uh, what came first, the chicken or the egg? I'm going to tell you, it's the egg, because yeah. the people from cold baths actually created the chicken on Earth after the flood in Atlantis, so that the surviving humanity would have a food source. So that's the truth of the chicken or the egg. Um, aren't, aren't you, the eggplant came first. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Anyway, the Sintamani Stone, uh, Louis was guided there in 2012. I talked about this a little yesterday. I'm not sure where everyone else was. Oh, you found it. Um, thank you. And he was projected into the mountain, and a blue light came out from the stone. And those two items, the golden disk of the sun and the Sintamani, which are several hundred miles apart as a bird flies, are recalibrating the tunnels of set or the etheric pathways on the Earth. If you look on a satellite uh, above, uh, and it's on my website, Louis has a picture of it, you can see lines of force going out from the volcano, and they're going to sacred sites, ancient sites. Though they're reordering the vibrations as uh, Evan Strong talked about the energies in the portal. These vortexes are real. They're becoming more enlivened. And they are places for us to go to, to tune in and to anchor and to raise our own vibrations in an attitude of sacredness. And I want to do something here. Um, I wanted to do this the other day, but um, let's do a little sonic healing and communication with each other that um, I like to do in my conferences a fair amount and also with groups and we're kind of unified here already. We've been here for a day and a half or more and we're kind of tuned into each other's vibration. And one of the important uh, ways that we can communicate non-verbally and to kind of reach a group harmonic is to literally do the OM. And so there's nothing to it if you don't know how to do it. Don't have any shyness in regards to your being on key. We're just going to close our eyes right now and empty our mind of all thought. We're going to let all my drama go and just focus on our feelings right now and our breath. Let's take three deep breaths in. One. I'll hold it. And exhale. One more in. Now we're going to look into our third eye, with our eyes closed, and look up into our forehead and try and see our pituitary gland. We're going to take another breath, and as we exhale, we're going to just kind of tone home.
very good. One more time. Give it your all this time. Oh. It's kind of the outer sound current that is in our self and we start from the base uh, and you move up to the crown chakra so it's like the seven notes you're, you're hitting all of your endocrine glands at once and you can actually do that on your own regularly I want to share another secret with you that I found out when I was really young I was really in the incense and uh, you want to control your thoughts in your mind I forget who asked me about that today but you want to still your mind and prepare yourself, you get in a room that has, like in your bedroom, with no windows open, light a candle, and you want to light some incense and look at it. And if your mind's gone crazy, the incense is going to be moving like ribbons. And as you still your mind, the incense will be like straight up, just a little ribbon at the top, just a little ribbon. So you can use incense and not perfumed Easter. Get, get a real, like an amber agarbati or like a saibaba incense, of, you know, a really nice incense. And uh, you're gonna get, you could use that to calm your mind and to still your mind from your thoughts. So that's a, a, a ancient technique. I'm gonna share with you uh, uh, some prayers that the Venusians say. There's a, a cycle of three prayers and they're called the ring of fire prayers. And so you can repeat them after me. And it goes like this. Eternal Mother, Father, God. Creator of the universe. Hear this day my petition. Surround me now with your divine ring of fire. The five year protection. The five year abundance. The fire of complete healing. And the, and the fire of divine abundance. I now command the hand of Almighty God on my behalf this very moment. Let it be so. Amen. Now here's the middle ring of fire. In the name of the everlasting God of creation, I, as a child of Almighty God, hereby command all evil forces of darkness to release me now from every force, power, and authority that is binding me and preventing me from becoming fruitful and successful. I hereby rebuke the forces of the evil one. I command you to take your hands off me now and forevermore. Now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The, now this is my favorite one, and this is the inner ring of fire. Eternal Mother, Father, God, creator of the universe, hear this hour my earnest prayer. Anoint my eyes, my ears, my lips, my mind, and my heart with your divine inner flame of fire. Provide me now with perfect health and longevity. Lord, revitalize and redirect my spirit. into your divine service and cause me to be the perfect master that you intend me to be. So be it. Amen. Now Dr. Frank recommends that we do that with the candle and at the end of that uh, that you blow the candle out. And um, this is not, uh, uh, you know, again, I, this is not like, a, this is an affirmation and it comes from their knowledge and their communion with the Spirit of God. So there's Sahama, we talked about that. Um, let's see here. 
Okay, here's a little uh, little video one of the people did. This is uh, where I'm going in April. I can't I love it down there. So um, uh, this is a uh, a beautiful location, and you are you want silence? This is where you go. I mean, there's one little. Uh, hotel with like eight people and there's a hot springs uh, about a mile away with another four people so there's like 12 people within 50 miles um, and we stay in these rooms it's cold bring your your uh, your uh, stuff there um, and uh, it's very beautiful and um, this is the location where I think I talked about the guy that had the contact where he ran away I talked about yesterday, they went there and they had a group and Louie has these things and they have their cameras out all the time and they say, okay, put the cameras away, time to meditate. And as soon as the cameras went away, the UFOs came around the mountain and he tells people to walk away and um, one of the guys went um, really far up over this hill and the UFO uh, went over and all the people went, oh, UFO went where Carlos was. And so another guy ran up, who was closer, ran up, and the um, guy was running back. He said, a ship opened up a door and a guy was standing there. I go, wasn't that what we're here for? Hold on, let's go back. So they went back and they had a, a communication. Louis had other experiences with his groups where the ship lands like, you know, 30 yards away, and then they roll down the windows and they wave, and then they take off. Uh, that's where the, the hill the guy ran up. We got stuck in the mud there, or stuck in the dirt. That was a big fiasco. It was getting very cold. Uh, and I was telling him, look, there's no way we're getting out of there uh, without help in a plank. But uh, in the top of that mountain is where Louis was a uh, thing. And I think the next slide shows a little ship that was moving. Uh, we, we saw some ships this night, but... Um, It was, uh, there's, there's a ship moving, we had a couple of those, so. Anyway, I'll end that one, because I got a lot of stuff to show you. And then we'll do one more prayer here that I did down there, and I think I may have to uh, um, put it on silent. Uh, okay, here's a great invocation, and I think the sound is so bad. We had wind there, and we just started to do these videos um, up there, so. Yeah, the sound. Uh, I think I'm gonna skip the sound. He gave me a thing for that. Uh, blah blah blah. I was really mellowed out. We had some amazing meditations there, but um, I think I yabbered on to about here. Here we go. Okay, here we go. And you may know the great invocation, so you can you can say this if you know it. And I'm going to lip sync myself. <laughs> <laughs> and this is uh, uh, inner earth and spiritual hierarchy uh, uh, invocation that's good. From the point of light within the mind of God. Oops, I'm still talking. Oh my <laughs> God, Rob, why didn't you too much yabbering? Yabbity, yabbity. Okay, here we go. From the point of light, within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love, within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men, the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center that we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out, and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light, love, and power restore the plan on earth. Amen. That place is amazing. I was like... 
It's like I was just huffing glue for days. So. <laughs> I was just like, woo! The energies were so, they just don't stop. And at Lake Titicaca, too, something comes over you and it's just like uh, amazing energies. Oh, uh, here's the, uh, okay. I, I, I'm going to skip that. Uh, the rise. Light, sound, color, and the telluric shift. It's almost time to get into technology. We know about the Ascended Masters. That's, uh, um, that's uh, Blavatsky, that's Kutumi, El Moria, and St. Germain. Uh, this is a, a picture taken from a spaceship. Uh, uh, Christ at the time of the decision. They did a lot of walking in those days, and he just walked around. This is Joseph of Arimathea, and this is John the Beloved, who uh, also incarnated as uh, uh, one of the dragon slayers. Now, there's the real dragon slayers, the real reptilians that needed to be slain, that had taken over the kings and were destroying, and then there are there's the metaphorical ones, but there were real dragons uh, and reptilians uh, breathing fire and they were stealing kids and all that stuff like they're doing today. But this is a beautiful picture of, uh, I, I think he's got like a flower thing coming down his hair. So this is the moment when Christ decided he, would, he knew his fate and accepted that he would uh, die and resurrect. Um, I have a, I'm a founding member and I helped create this website. It was instrumental in the beginning of this thing I've resigned now. I'm back helping them a little bit. They went through some personal issues and I helped mediate a little bit, but prepareforchange.net was where you can find information about the event. And uh, it, they share a lot of negative posts about what's going on and I told them, like, you get, need to get more positive info. We don't have to just expose the cabal every two seconds. We can talk about you know, meditation, power of crystals, and they do that as well. But the event is, uh, and I wrote some stuff on my website that talks about that stuff. Um, and uh, Help Ever Hurt Never. Um, that's an angel picture that um, represents, uh, I don't know, I had some amazing experiences. And uh, uh, I was with the artist when he was preparing this series of uh, pictures up in Mount Shasta. And uh, like a couple of years later, I saw it and go, this is my logo. And he's a friend of mine, his name is Bruce Harmon, but help ever hurt ne never. Um, this is an important thing for you to realize. And this is the secret. What we feel, see, and hear and project through our neurologic system outward is the living condition of our reality. We're responsible. Now, we ask for protection from the evil one. There is a, uh, a being, uh, and you can read that on my website under Truth References called The Cosmic Plan. And that will take you through the history of the dimensions and what's been going on in the physical plane. It's very involved. And um, I just prefer that you read that and make your own assessment. And it talks about uh, the being called Satanul and, and uh, the being Lucifer. Um, Lucifer means uh, bright light or whatever, but the morning star was a planet called Maldak that became the asteroid belt. Now Venus is the morning star. It's for us, it just rises, but it doesn't have anything to do with the being called Lucifer. He was a, uh, a high being in this quadrant of the galaxy that uh, had some issues with the way evolution is going from the material plane to the spiritual plane. Uh, or to the mental plane, the spiritual plane. And um, he had ideas that life needed to be harder for people on the physical plane so they can respect it. But um, that wasn't the plan of Archangel Michael. And um, he rebelled and in one of the multi-dimensional uh, planets in the altar system called Havona, on the sea of glass, he made a pitch. And a lot of beings in the galaxy went along with him and it became part of the, what we call the Satonian Rebellion that wreaked havoc and was destroying worlds due to the materialistic um, 
problems there. And there was a Greek being who had ended some of the galactic wars, and his name was Satanio. And he actually was working for the light, and then all of a sudden he decides he's going to side with this other um, being. And these are multidimensional, higher beings that have powers and stuff. So um, that's kind of where we're at. It's caused a lot of problems there. But um, the answer is that we, we have the power within ourselves. This is a ET. Some people think it's Valiant Thor. It's not. It's an ET in a government meeting. Um, the victory of the light. We're looking forward to um, um, free energy and uh, transparency and honesty in our system. We have a lot of lies and we, we can't put up with this anymore. And you, that's not going to happen anymore. <laughs> there won't be any borders. You can go wherever you want. There's a whole paradigm shift. And the way I, I think of it, I want to tell people is like, what's going to happen? Everyone wants to know every detail. No one knows every detail. There's plans and the interdimensionals are working with us behind the scenes so that like Sue's experiences are going to kick in for a lot of us immediately, especially the star seeds. But it's like the whole world's looking at the stage and the way I kind of think it's going to happen is going to be, boom, there's a loud noise and everyone's going to go, what is that? It's just a guy who fell off the ladder while changing a light. And we're going to look back at our reality, and it's going to be completely different. And we're going to like, what? Uh, we'll kind of forget where we were. And there's a whole new vibe, a whole new energy, a whole new positive thing where people won't be fighting again. We're going to like, that's a good idea. Yeah, I can help you. I'll do that. No, you don't have to pay me. It's all right. Just a thousand points of light, not the kind of gentler machine gun hand that George Bush was promising, but the real points of light of us choosing through our own decision to move forward into positive actions and associations with each other.